Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Bud Abbott and Lou Costello in Buck Private. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. To a producer, one of the most gratifying sounds in the theater is what may be classified academically as the ventral rhesus. But backstage, we have a slang name for it that I'll call the uh, tummy laugh. Past masters at producing this phenomenon are tonight's stars, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, who hit Hollywood with the force of a hurricane less than a year ago. The picture that put them over was Buck Privates, which Universal made in the ordinary course of the studio schedule. Suddenly one day, everybody on the lot, from office boy to president, woke up to the fact that gold had been discovered in Universal City. Buck Privates had panned out as a bonanza, and that's the play we've picked for Abbott and Costello's debut in the Lux Radio Theater. It's a story of life in an army camp, some highly imaginary army camp, where a tent flap opens and Abbott and Costello blow in with the draft. But, of course, any similarity between this play and life in the armed forces of the Republic is purely coincidental. Plays like this speak a universal language in entertainment, just as Lux Flakes speaks a language everybody can understand in the department of keeping things clean. A gentleman in our audience has just sent me a little anecdote along this line from his daughter in India. The daughter's letter describes her purchase of some fine silk Persian rugs from a picturesque peddler. One thing about the funny little rug man I think you should profit from, she writes, were his washing instructions. Picture in southern India, a transient rug peddler with limited and broken English, wandering down from the north with odds and ends of trinkets from Kashmir and rugs from Persia. We asked him how we should go about having our new treasures clean when the need should arise. His reply, not to clean careless, please, just washing with Lux. Now that advice may be a little ungrammatical, but it shows that the fame of Lux Flakes transcends the boundaries of any country. Hiding behind the curtain now are Abbott and Costello, so we'll raise it. For the first act of Buck Privates, starring Bud Abbott as Smitty and Lou Costello as Herbie, with Benny Rubin as Sergeant Collins, Lynn Carver as Judy, and Gene O'Donnell as Bob. <laughs> September the 14th, 1940. Congress passes the first peacetime selective training act in the history of our nation. From the farms they come and from the factories, from quiet villages, from roaring cities, the youth of America on the march, swelling the ranks with volunteers. Step right up, fellas. Volunteers in this line, draft is over there. Keep it moving, fellas. That's an army recruiting station in a vacant movie theater with a long line of men outside. But just down the street, are two boys who haven't heard the news yet. These two boys don't know what day it is. One of them doesn't even know what time it is. They're up to their old tricks, selling neckties on street corners. Now, gather around me, gents, just a little closer. Thank you, thank you, that's fine. Now, gents, I don't want to give you any sales talk, uh, but never in my life have I ever had the opportunity of presenting such merchandise. Look at these neckties. Feel that material. Uh, pardon me, will you please step aside, mister, and let that little fat boy in. Uh, like to buy a tie, Sonny? Uh, yes, sir. How much money have you got? I got in the vicinity of $28. Oh, you've got $28. In the vicinity. In the neighborhood, I got three bucks. Then you have $3. Yes, sir. Roughly speaking. When you smooth it out, I got a buck. Wait a minute. Just a minute. Then you have a dollar. I got a dollar. All right. Just hand it over, please. Thank you. The gentleman buys ten ties. Ten for a dollar is cheap. I'll take ten of them. Hey, Fatty, how can he sell ties that cheap? Oh, that's easy, mister. We ain't got no overhead. We ain't even got a license to sell ties. I get it now. You two guys are working in cahoots. The whole thing's a jib. Those ties ain't even worth a nickel. I'm gonna call a cop. Hey, open. Now look what you did. Grab those ties and let's get going before the cops come. Come, come on, on, hurry up. Steady. We'll hop in that green and white taxi cab. All right. Step on it, driver. We're trying to get away from a cop. Now ain't that just dandy? Smitty, eh? it's a cop. We're in a police car. Let me out of here. Stop, come back here. Come back here. All right, men, keep 
moving. Volunteers in this line. Drafties over there. Volunteers in this line. Drafties over there. Drafties over there. Volunteers in this line. Oh, boy. Come on, Harvey. Oh, you got the ties? I got them. Boy, we sure got away from that dumb cop. Hey, come on. We've got to hide somewhere. Hey, Schmitty, let's hide in the movies. What movies? That line over there. They must be going in to see a picture, huh? Hey, looks like it. Well, let's get in line and buy a couple of tickets. Okay. Excuse me, brother. Hey, what's the idea? I want to get in line. Well, get in the back where you belong. Oh, tough guy, huh? You want to fight? Take your coat off. All right, my coat's off. Now what? It's much cooler this way, ain't it? No. no. <laughs> Please cut it out, Herbie. No fighting. Let's get the tickets. Okay. Hey, look. Look at the way they dress the ticket seller. Like a soldier. Uh, hello, fellas. What can I do for you? Oh, that's good. We want to know how much it costs to get in. Why, not a thing, boys. As a matter of fact, we're going to give you $21. You're going to give us $21? Uh-huh. Bank night! <laughs> hey, giving any dishes away? Nope. Tin plates. Tin plates? That's a novelty, Smitty. Now we can start a new set. Sure. Uh, come on, step inside. Hurry up, Herbie, or we won't get a seat. Okay. Hey, you sure? Yeah? You what sure. picture's playing in here? What picture? You're in the army now. Oh, that's well. I never saw that picture. Here you are, Joe. A couple of new customers. Well, fine, fine. Hello, boys. Drafty? No, not a bit. You feel drafty, Smitty? Not me. I feel very comfortable in this joint here. <laughs> well, good. Now let's get you registered. Yeah, come on. Let's get registered before the drawing starts. Ah, uh, you think you're going to win, huh, Smitty? Sure. Uh, sign right here, please. Oh, please. Oh, boy, what polite uses. Shh, quiet, please. And now uh, let me have your signature right here, please. I'd be delighted. And I hope I win. <laughs> Everybody is so happy around here. Well, congratulations, men. We're glad to have you in the army. Thank you. We're very glad to be. Why? Why? Let, Let me out of here. Come on, gangway. Head out. Get, Get me out. Just a moment, you Yeah, man. just a moment. Oh, Smitty, the same cop. Yeah, it's the same cop. What's the matter, officer? I owe these guys a pinch. Come on, boy. Wait a minute. They're in the army, officer. You can't touch them now. There. You see, wise guy? <laughs> So you're in the army, eh? Well, I'm joining up myself tomorrow. I'll be seeing you, boys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Smitty, I'm laughing. <laughs> what am I laughing at? <laughs> Report at the High Street Armory at 7 o'clock. You leave the railway station at 9. Until then, dismiss! What happened? The officer dismissed us. You mean we're fired before we even get started? Oh, no, no. We have time off till 7 o'clock. Hello, fellas. Got a match? Sure, here. Thanks. My name's Martin, Bob Martin. Hiya, neighbor. I'm Smitty. This is Herbie. Hello, Herbie. Were you drafted too? No, sir. I'm an involuntary volunteer. <laughs> oh, uh, Martin, will you get my hat? I left it in the other room. I think you'd better get it yourself, Mr. Parker. What's that? I'm not working for you anymore. Now, look, Martin, I thought we had it understood. If we happen to get in the same company, I wanted you to keep right on with your job. I'll pay you, of course. Thanks. But we're just a couple of buck privates now. You won't need a chauffeur, Mr. Parker. All right, Martin. I won't be in very long anyhow. But maybe if you behaved yourself, I could get you out of me. Through your father, I suppose. Well, he has a little influence in Washington, you know. What do you say? I'm not having any, thank you. I'll serve my time like everybody else. <laughs> Go ahead. Mr. Parker, I've worked for you for two years, haven't I? That's right. It's been quite an experience. I've carried you upstairs and put you to bed any number of times. Yes, but why bring that up? Remember that night I froze both my ears waiting for you? And that accident you had when I took the rap and went to jail for you? Look, Martin, let's not reminisce. Yeah, but we're in the Army now, so I think it's about time I tendered my resignation. Very well, tender it. Yes, sir. Would you mind putting up your hands, Mr. Parker? Anything to oblige an old friend. So long, Mr. Parker. I'll see you at camp. Well, what do you think of that? You know, Smitty, that gives me an idea. Yeah, what? I've been working for you for six years. So? Now we're in the army. Well? And it's all your fault. What do you mean? So I'm going to tend to you my resignation. Herbie. Herbie. You hit me. Smitty, so help me, I didn't mean it. Ah. I must be going out of my head. Yeah. You're my best friend. Not now. I didn't realize that I hit you. I don't know. Oh, Smitty. Never mind. I'll never get away with it again. I know you won't. Please, Smitty. Do me a favor, will you, Smitty? No. Hit me right in the chin and I, make me happy. I will not. Oh, Smitty. No! Don't let me go through life with that on my mind. Hit me right in the puss, will you, Smitty? Make me happy. Right in the kisser. All right. 
and I had to coax him to do it. And when you hear that whistle, hop to it. Now fall out until train time. Cigarette, soldier? Compliments of the army. Judy! Bob! Judy, great. What, what are you doing here? Why, I joined the army. Go on. No, really, I'm a camp hostess now. <laughs> We're going to add the feminine touch. Say, that'll make being drafted more popular. <laughs> I think it's pretty popular right now. Yeah. Cigarettes, Bob? Thanks. See you later. See you later, Judy. Chewing gum? Apples? Oh, hello, soldier. Hello, miss. Like some cigarettes? No, ma'am. Well, how about an apple? Have you got a lollipop? <laughs> I'm sorry. Why, you like lollipops? Oh, I'm just a sucker for those things. Cigarettes, apples. Hey, you know what, Smitty? Gee, she's a nice looking soldier. Oh, stop looking at her. I was only looking at her to see if she was looking at me to see if I was looking at her. Oh, keep quiet. What do you always pick on me for? How are you doing, soldier? Oh, hello. Hello, cigarettes? Thanks. My name's Randy Parker. Hi, Mr. Parker. I'm Judy Gray. Well, see you at camp. Oh, now, wait. Don't go. Oh, but I have to. I'm on duty. A hostess' first duty is to keep the soldiers happy. I won't be unless we get better acquainted. Oh, we'll have plenty of time to become acquainted. Oh, but I'll be out of the army in a week. Sit down. I'm sorry. Come but... on. Will you please let me go? Not until we're better acquainted. Please. What goes oh. on here? What, what's the matter, oh, Judy? Oh, it's nothing, Bob. Just a fresh recruit trying out the manual of arms. Forget it. Judy, I'm running out of gum. Do you have any? Coming, Patty. I better tell you something, Parker. Stay away from that girl. I'll pick my own company, thanks. Maybe on Park Avenue, but not in the army. Keep away from Judy. Come on, Dice. Come on, Dice. Do your duty. Seven for Papa. Come on. Just this once. And there they go. Ha! Freedom oh, and wheat, boys. Oh, Seven and natural. Boy, what luck. Come on. Put your money down, boys. Put your money down. Hey, Smitty! Hey, Smitty! Hey. Hello, Smitty. How are you? Hello, Herbie. What are you doing? Your pal Smitty just gave us a lesson in dice. Oh, yeah? How do you like that? Playing dice on a choo-choo train? Yeah. Oh, boy. What is that? Dice. Dice? Mm-hmm. What's dice? That's a game. <laughs> what dice do you mean? game. You ever play a game of dice? Oh, no, not me. So you, you play games? Oh, I play games, but I don't play that game of dice. What do you play? I play I Spy, and I play Post Office, and oh. then I and I play Jacks. Jacks? I'm up to my fuzzies. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> this is a real game. You, you see, there's numbers on there from one to six. You roll them out. Now, if you should roll a six and a one, that's seven. That's a natural. You win. If you should roll a five and a two, that's seven. That's a natural. You win. If you should roll a four and a three, that's seven. That's a natural. You win. That's all you do is win. Well, no. Oh, you can lose, too. Well, yes. If you throw, like, two ones, that's crap. You lose. If you throw two sixes, that's crap. You lose. In other words, seven you win and crap. You lose. And you can win and you can lose. That's all there is to it. Nice game. You want to play it? I love to. All right, there you are. There's a dice. Now, uh, uh, wait a minute before you roll them out. Of course, uh, if you roll them out and you make a seven... What do you win? Nothing. Well, now, you don't want to win nothing, do you? Not if I can help it. Well, certainly not. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll each put $10 down. Then when you make your seven, see, you pick up $20. Oh, we each put $10 down? That's it. Smitty. What? Don't call this gambling, will you? No, 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 no. I don't want my mother to find out oh, about this. Oh, don't worry about that. We'll call it bank night. All right, we'll call it bank night. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Now, wh what do I do with these square things? You just roll them out, and if you should throw a seven, you win, and crap, you lose. Throw them out? That's all. Here I go. Never played the game, huh? Put your $10 down. Please. There you are. It's down. There you are. I mean, you had it in your hand. I want oh, it down. There it is. There it is. Down now. on the it's floor. It's down now. Keep it down. All right, now. Don't get, get it. Your all right, all right, get your foot off it. Get your foot off it. All right. All right. All right. Stay clear at that tent. All right. There you are. It's all clear. Now, go ahead. Roll them out. Okay. Here I go. Let them go. Whee! Seven. Mm -hmm. I win. Yep. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I forgot to tell you, don't pick up the money right away. I gotta pick up the money now. Y not now, not now. You pick it up later. Oh, you want me to wait until the money gets up to my chin? Uh, then I ship it down by truck. That's the idea, yes. <laughs> well, how do you like the game so far? It's good. Uh, you like it? Never played it, huh? No, sir. Mm, all right, well, what do you want to shoot for now? Fade that. Keep wait your hands to yourself. Wait a minute, what do you mean, fade well, that? Well, don't slap me in the face. Thought you told me you never played this game. Well, it ain't a bit nice. Now, keep your hands to yourself. Just a minute. I, I don't you... like it, that's all. You told me... Now, you, you got no right to slap me in a push. Just a minute. You told me you never played this game. I never played the game before, and that's that. And now, keep your hands where they belong. Where did you get that fade that? It just got to me out of thin air. What do you mean out of thin air? I just thought of it, and I said it. Is it wrong? No, it's too darn right. <laughs> Are you sure you never played this game? 
Yes, sir. I'm surprised at you, Smitty, for you even to doubt, doubt that all I right, did. All right, never mind. Go ahead. Doubt! All right, I'll take another chance. Hey, uh, roll them out. Go ahead. Forget about it. Seven and you in, crap, you lose. Same thing. And I want to remind you once more, now keep your hands to yourself, because I don't but like that. Don't make those remarks. I don't like them. You can kick me. Don't slap me. Never mind. I'll use my own judgment. Go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. I throw them out again. Throw them out again. Whee! Seven again. Mm hmm. I'm lucky. Yes. Uh, well, I guess it's beginner's luck. Yes. All right, so what do you want to shoot now? Well, uh, let her ride. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> now, just a minute. Smitty. Just a minute. I'm telling you, now keep now, your hands to yourself. I don't go for don't that. Don't give now. me that. Now, come on. Now, speak up like a man. Now, boot me around, but don't slap just me. Just a minute. Now, don't, now, don't go for that. Don't tell me you got I'll that. I'll quit up. the army, so Just a minute. Don't I resign. I quit. You can't quit. I had a better offer from the Navy. Now, wait a minute. Just a minute. Let me get out of here. Now, just a minute. Now, wait a minute. Don't tell me you got that out of thin air. Where'd you get it? Come on, where'd you hear it? I it at the clubhouse. No, I knew it. I'm sorry. Then you did play the game. Not me, Smitty. I'm not lying. Honestly. Come on, speak up. I was at the clubhouse one night, and I saw a bunch of the kids. Mm -hmm. And they was all around the table, and they had lumps of sugar with some numbers on them. Yes. Dots. And they was throwing them out. And they was yelling those kind of things. Oh, 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 but you didn't play in the game. Oh, no, sir. Oh. I was too young. Oh, I... I'm just a boy. Oh, I know that. I they know wouldn't that. let oh, me play. I... Well, I understand it now. It's all right. No hard feelings. No. no. Starting Tuesday, I'm going out with girls. Why, sure. Why, should? <laughs> yes. Here you are. You see, those kind of things, when I say those things, I'm at the age where I pick them up fast. I know that. I know that. I appreciate that, because you you're a smart boy. You can't blame me for that. No, 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 no. Go ahead now, Roy. But roll. keep your hands to yourself. All right, now, no more arguments. Everything's lovely. All right? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Roll them out. The same thing? Same thing. Seven it's, you win. Perhaps you lose. It's a good game. You like it, don't you? Yeah. That's the boy. Yeah, go. See the money piling up? Yeah, in my direction, too. That's right. Go ahead. Whee! Eleven. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. You never did say nothing about eleven. Oh, that's right. Well, eleven don't mean anything. No? Mm, no. Personally, I don't know why they put those numbers on the dice. I guess they had a lot of room, so they put extra dots uh, on yeah, That's it. That's it. I'll tell you what we do. What? We'll call eleven intermission. Intermission? Say, that's a good name for it. But go ahead. I'll give you another chance. Intermission. Intermission. Order. Now, I rule them out again? That's right. Can you give me another chance? Sure. You're a regular kid, Sure, Smitty. I am. Go ahead. Now, everything's That's over. my pal. Go ahead. Yeah, go. That's the boy. Whee! Four. Little Joe. Little Joe, eh? <laughs> I got that. Now, Smitty, I'm telling now, you. Don't give me that. Th no right. more slap me in the face now. Uh -huh. I don't go for that, that's all. Little Joe. Clubhouse, eh? I'll fix you in that clubhouse. Pick up those dice. Not until you say please. Pick them up. Say please. Pick them up. Well, it's a good thing you didn't say it. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Just before you roll them out. If you should roll a seven before you make that four, you lose. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yes, what? Yes, sir. That's better. You've got to be one or the other. All right, never mind. Go ahead. Just roll the dice out. <laughs> Don't forget, seven, you lose. Four is your point. Whee! Three, you lose. How come? Well, what did you roll the first time? Four. What did you just roll? Three. Well, four and three is what? Seven. Well, you lose. Oh, you add them up. Oh, you didn't learn that at the clubhouse, did you? You never said nothing about add them up, uh, Smitty. Never mind. Now we'll play it. Smitty's uh, cheating. Never mind. No Smitty's no. cheating. Now we'll <laughs> Now we'll play it my way. You're going to use my money now? Why not? You've used mine long enough. Yes, sir. Oh, come on, put it down. Okay. Put it all down. I'll put it all, all down. Put it all down. Can I count it? Well, count it if you want. $20 bill, Penny. another $20 bill, right. a $10 bill, another $20 bill. Yeah. What'd you throw out there? Somebody put a buck in here. Yeah, all right. <laughs> go ahead. Now, here they go. Watch them. There we are, Herbie. Ah, 11. That's, that's a winner. 11. That's, that's a natural. See, 11 is a winner. That's no, no. Leave the money down. Now, wait a minute. Leave the money down, well, Smitty. That's a natural. That's I 11, isn't it? Yes. Intermission. <laughs> go ahead. I give you another chance. You uh, was good to me, I'm good to you. All right, all right. Here they go. There you are. Six. Six. Six is the point. Six. Here they go again. Watch them. There you are. Six, six. right back. I win. Uh, uh, leave the money alone. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Leave the money alone. Wait, now, don't you lose. Money. No, I don't lose. What'd you roll the first time? Six. What did you just roll? Six. Six, six, twelve. Craps, boxcars, big bennies. Ha, <laughs> ha. <laughs> After a short intermission, Mr. DeMille and our stars Bud Abbott and Lou Costello will be back with Act Two of Buck Privates. But now, let's have some music. What's it going to be, girls? Just wait and see. Now listen very closely. If runs in stockings are your fate, report before it is too late. Lux them, lux them every night and save them from that awful plight. Good advice just now. The stocking's more precious than ever. Uh, sing it again. 
If runs in stockings are your fate, reform before it is too late. Yes, with sheer stockings at a premium these days, women must be extra sure to give them gentle care. Harsh soaps or cake soap rubbing weaken elasticity. Then stockings pop into runs. Locks them, locks them every night and save them from that awful plight. Lux saves stockings elasticity. And here's an important point. Soil and perspiration should never remain in stockings to weaken the fibers. So be sure to lux stockings after every wearing. With new quick lux, it takes only a minute or so. And this gentle care has been proved to cut down runs. It's Carol Hold Appreciate. Silk, nylon, cotton, rayon, or wool. Give all your stockings gentle lux care. Over 90% of the makers of all these kinds of stockings recommend Lux Flakes. Buy a big box tomorrow and save your stockings with new quick Lux. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Buck Privates, starring Bud Abbott as Smitty and Lou Costello as Herbie. The Buck Privates, 15,000 strong, have arrived at camp. They're not an army yet, but in those straggling ranks is the raw material of a mighty fighting force. On the parade ground, Company K stands at attention as an officer passes down the line. As I said before, I'm Captain Williams, commanding officer of this company, and I'm just as new to you as you are to me. But we all have the same job ahead of us. A great many people are counting on our success. People from all walks of life who are giving to this great national defense program just as much as you or I. No one expects you to be seasoned soldiers overnight, but we're going to do everything we can to help you in every possible way. And I believe that if we all work together, that we'll make K Company a unit of which any regiment can be proud. Sergeant Callahan? Yes, sir. Appoint acting corporals and assign the men to the tent. Yes, sir. All right, men. Count off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, all right. Who's next? Science all right, you. all right, so it's me. Thirteen! Who likes a number like that? Come on, men, come on, get those bunks made up. Caps blew five minutes ago. Now get to work. Come That's on. a nice job, Parker. I never knew you made your own bed at home. I must have forgotten to tell you. Hurry up, Herbie. Make up that bed. A fine thing. Twenty-one bucks a month to be a chambermaid. Men, <laughs> the new sergeant. What kind of a place is this? Clean up that mess! Hey, Smitty, that voice sounds familiar. Hey, too familiar. It's that cop, the one who was going to pinch us. Come on, let's get out of here. Grab your stuff, quick. Well, well, look who's here. So you two boys are in my section, eh? Not anymore. We're resigning. Come on, Herbie. Come here, you! Where do you think you're going? To collect my social security. You can't collect your social security until you're 65. Seeing you, I age 35 years. <laughs> Put that grip down. Put it down! All right, all right. I'll go over there and climb into that bunk. Sergeant? Yeah? I got a confession to make. Well? I ain't got my nightie on yet. Get in that bunk! All right! Smitty, I don't think that guy likes me. What? Hey, you. What's your name? Parker. Where did you learn to make up a bunk? Military school. Why didn't you tell the first sergeant? He might have made you an acting corporal. You can have the whole army. By next week, I'll be through with it. Ah, uh, you're the one they've been talking about, eh? The dude with all the drag. That's me, Sarge. Well, drag yourself into that bunk. You got a long day ahead of you tomorrow. And everybody, quiet! Stay that way. Sergeant? Yeah? Will you tell me a bedtime story? Chuck! All right! recreation hall. Soldiers are privileged to come to the recreation hall whenever they're off duty. You know, it's very nice of you to show me around, Miss Cray. Yes, I'm sure you'd never found it yourself, Private Parker. Oh, never. Now, look, Judy, I want to talk to you. How about forgetting what happened at the station? I've already forgotten it. Well, it was your own fault, you know. My fault? Certainly. You shouldn't be so beautiful. <laughs> Judy, hey, I'm... Private Parker! Yes? Private Parker, I got a message for you. Captain Williams wants to see you. Oh, that's fine. Maybe you heard from the old man. I better go, Judy. Of course. Now, you wait here. I'll be right back. Say, Herbie, who gave you that message? I happen to know that Captain Williams just left camp for the weekend. I got a message for you, too. You have? That guy over there, Bob Martin. He wants to see you. Okay, Herbie, I'll take over now. Thanks, pal. 
<laughs> Say, what is this? You may not know it, but you've just been rescued. I have what? Mm-hmm. The captain doesn't want to see Parker, but I want to see you. Oh, the old army game, huh? Come on outside, Judy. I want to show you the moon. All right, Bob, but I've got to come right back. Oh, boy. I feel just like Cupid. There you are. Hiya, Hiya, Herbie, old boy. Hiya, Smitty. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. You know, you're looking great, fella. You know, I was just standing over there thinking, now there's a real soldier. Y yes, Herbie, you are, really, Herbie. You look swell in uniform. You know, I'm proud to be your friend. You can stop right there. I ain't got a penny. No, no, Not no, a penny. No, 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 Herbie. Anytime you talk like no. that, it's going to cost me something, no, brother. wait a minute, Herbie. I didn't ask you for any money. I know, but you got that look in your eye. Right. No, 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 no. Did I ask you for any money? Now, listen. You cleaned me up in that crap game, didn't you? You gave me a lesson, that's all I know. Now, by the way, will you do me a favor? Here it comes. I know it. What is it? Herbie, I'm broke. You're broke. Blow me a few bucks, will you? How many bucks is a few bucks? Very little. All I need is $50. $50? Mm-hmm. Smitty, I, I can't lend you $50. Oh, yes, you can. No, I can't. All I got is $40. All right. Give me the $40. Okay, here. Fine. Now you owe me 10 Okay, I owe you 10 Mm-hmm. All right. Wait a minute. Smitty, how come I owe you ten? Well, what did I ask you for? You asked me for fifty dollars. And how much did you give and me? I gave you forty dollars. So you owe me ten dollars. Excuse me, that's right. That's okay. <laughs> Why you owe me forty? No, 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 no! Don't change the subject. I'm not changing the subject. You're trying to change my finances. Come on now, Smitty, give me back my forty dollars. No, all right, here, take it. There's your forty dollars. Now give me the ten dollars you owe me. Okay, here. I'm paying you on account. On account? On account? I don't know how I come to owe it to you. Oh, <laughs> that's the way you feel about it, that's the last time I'll ever ask you for the loan of $50. Just a minute, Smitty. Nah. Don't get sore at me, Why will not? you? How can I lend you $50 now? All I got is 30 mm, Well, give me the $30 and you'll owe me 20 This is getting worse all the time. What do you mean? First I owe you 10 now I owe you 20 well, Why do you run yourself into debt? I'm not running in, you're pushing me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it if you can't handle your finances. I do all right with my money. You're doing all right with mine, too. Now, wait just a minute. Now, look, I asked you for the loan of $50, and you gave me 30 So you owe me $20. 20 and 30 is 50 No, no, no. 25 and 25 is 50 All right, all right. Here's your $30. Now, give me back the $20 you owe me. I don't know. Something's wrong. I don't know what it is, but something's screwy. You're a fine guy. Own loan a pal, $50. How can I lend you 50 All I got now is 10 Well, listen. To show you that I'm your pal... You want to double that money? Goodbye, Smitty. I'll see you around. No, wait, now, time. listen, listen. Go on, go listen, on. I'll see you some other time. Just go a on. minute. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want that kind of money. On the up and up with me all the time. You know that. Now, look. Take a number. Any number at all from one to ten. And don't tell me. I got it. Is the number out or even? What's three? Now, nah, don't Who tell I me. I told him. I told, I told you not to I'm tell not supposed to tell you. It. And I told you. See, I don't want that kind and of... And I truthful. I don't want that kind and of... And I truthful. That's right. I don't want that kind of I money. I shouldn't tell him. No. Though. I'm truthful, though. I, I know, but I'd be cheating you that way. Yeah. Right, I don't now, like... Come on, now, let's start all over here. Let's start all, all over. Right, now, take a number. I got it. Now, is the number odd or even? Even. Ah. Is the number between one and three? No. Uh, between three and five? I think I got him. Is the number between uh, five and seven? Yeah. Number six. Right. All right, I win. Give me the ten. Thanks, Herbie, old boy. Thanks a lot, Herbie. How did he do that? <laughs> Come in, Parker. Hey, you're not here to see Captain Williams again, are you? No, sir. I'm supposed to see the general this time. Uh, just a minute. Private Parker's here, sir. Oh, yes. Send him in. Private Parker reporting, sir. At ease. Well, Parker, I believe you know this gentleman here. I believe so. Hello, Dad. How are you, my boy? Well, let me see you. Well, you're looking better than your letters indicated. I feel fine. I thought you'd forgotten about me, Dad. Did you fix everything up in Washington? Well, I had a little difficulty, but everything is arranged. Oh, that's fine. Uh, why don't you take a look around the grounds while I get out of my uniform? I can't, son. Why not? Because I have to return to Washington at once, and because you're not getting out of that uniform. But, but you just said that, that you... I just fixed everything up. Well, I have. Parker, it seems that your father has a little more respect for Army life and Army institutions than you have. If you... Excuse me, sir, I don't understand all this. It's not very difficult, Randy. This camp may be short of a sport roadsters and chorus girls, but it's excellently equipped to make a man out of a playboy. You're going to stay here and put in your time. And you're going to like it. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Detail, out. Well, men, in all my 
experience. You are the six dumbest rookies I've ever had the misfortune of drilling. Oh, gee, thanks, Sarge. Quiet! Who, me? Step out here, yes, you. Listen, how can you be so stupid? I don't know, it just comes to me natural. <laughs> well, there's something else coming to you, and I'm going to see that you get it. Private Smith? Right here, Sergeant. Smith, you seem to know what this is all about. I want you to take these men and work with them all day and see if you can work some sense into them. I'm exhausted! Yes, sir. Oh, boy. Hi, Smitty. You're going to be the captain, huh? Detail. <laughs> Attention. It's all right, fellas. Don't get nervous. He's my pal. Anything I want to do, it's okay with me. You? Wipe that smile off your face. Are you kidding? Attention, you. Look, pal. It's me, Fat Herbie. Quiet! <laughs> One more word out of you and I'll slam you into the jug. Okay. Go ahead, Smitty. You want to be a big man? You want to be the captain? Shut Go up. ahead. You're the captain. What you're are you? the general. What are you doing? You're the commander. What no, are you I'm doing? promoting you in a hurry. What are you doing? What am I doing? What are you doing? I'm talking to myself. I don't talk so loud. Well, I got to hear what I got to say. Quiet. <laughs> Count off. One, two, three. Bingo. Stop it. <laughs> now, you behave yourself. You understand? I won't warn you again. Now, get your chin up. Get it up. All right, don't hit it. It's getting up. Get don't it hit up. it. What are you hitting me under the chin for? I'll do as I want. Throw out your chest. Huh? Throw out your chest. Oh, yeah, well. Throw it out. Get it out. Way out. Way out. Way out. Throw it out. I'm not true with it yet. Quiet. <laughs> what kind of talk you give me you here? You just keep quiet. I'll do the talking. Go ahead. You do the talking. Go That's ahead. That's right. Go ahead. Report me. Go ahead. Never mind that. Put me in a brig. I don't I'll care. I'll put you someplace. Right shoulder. Arm. I said right shoulder arms. That's your left shoulder. I'm left-handed. Get it over there. It feels better over here. Get it over there. <laughs> Never saw such a temper on a guy. Big man. Quiet. Okay, it's over there. Keep quiet. It's over there. I put it on the other side. Now keep it over there. What difference does that make what side you put it on? The Leave it over are there. going to come out the same Never way anyway. Never mind that. What I know about a gun anyway. You I don't know told. anything about a gun. You were told how to handle a gun. Gives me a gun. He says, go ahead, shoot at Will. That's all you have to do. Three million guys on the other side. I got to pick out a guy named Will. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Like that Sergeant Collins has got. What do you mean? He's got a nice gun. Shoots bullets for three miles and throws rocks the rest of the way. You just. <laughs> Detail. Left shoulder arms. Right shoulder arms. Left shoulder arms. Right shoulder arms. Left shoulder arms. Right shoulder arms. All right. right shoulder... All right. All right. right. Make up your mind. I'm going home. Can I come back here? Come. I forgot something. I'm going home. What'd you forget? I forgot to stay there. Never mind that. <laughs> Get with it. Right shoulder arm, left shoulder arm, right shoulder arm, left shoulder arm. Quiet, quiet, right shoulder arm, quiet. left shoulder arm. Do what you're told. What do you think I'm toting here, a machine gun? Quiet. Brr, brr, brr. It's discouraging. Quiet. Present. Arm. Okay, take it. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? I'm presenting it to you. I don't want it. Go on, take it. You I don't want it. it. You asked for it. Take no, it. I didn't ask well, for it. Well, then I don't want it either. Now Throw pick it up down. That gun. Pick up that gun. Take that gun up. Pick it up. Not until I get ready. Pick that gun up. I said not until I get ready. And I said pick that gun up. I think I'm ready. Yeah, I think you are. <laughs> and stop pointing that gun at your temple. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. Why not? It ain't loaded. Look. See? Herbie, take that gun away from your temple. What's the matter? Getting scared? It ain't huh? loaded. Look. Herbie, drop that gun. Okay. <laughs> Herbie! <laughs> Herbie! <laughs> Herbie, don't faint. Don't faint, Herbie. It's too late. Hello, Judy. Oh, hello, Private Parker. You going my way? Thanks, no. I'm waiting here for someone. Oh. Well, if you're waiting for Private Martin, I'm afraid he won't be able to keep his date with you. Oh. Oh, I think I understand. The uh, captain wanted to see him? Uh, not exactly. He's shooting with the company rifle team, and they're having some sort of a contest. Oh, yes, I heard. With those boys from Tennessee. But I thought you were the star of the team. Well, I was until this morning, and then the strangest thing happened. My wrist, I could hardly move it. I told Captain Williams about it, and he replaced me with the sixth man on the score sheet. Oh, and uh, Bob was the sixth man, of course. <laughs> of course. Well, how does your wrist feel now? Why, it's much better, thanks. In fact, it's completely cured. In other words, you walked out on your teammates just to chisel a date with me, is that it? Well, you're a lot more attractive than a target. I think you ought to know something, Mr. Parker. I don't think it will matter to you, but the men you sold out bet every cent they had on the team. That means on you. They did? They never mentioned it to me. They... All right, I'll make their losses good. With what? 
Money? What else can I do? It's just that easy for you, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you one thing. There's no price tag on loyalty or friendship. I didn't ask for this uniform. Why should I take it seriously? After what you did today, the only friend you'll have in camp is a guy that looks at you out of the mirror. And if he had any sense, he'd keep as far away from you as I'm going. Wait a minute. We'd have won if Barker had shown up. Yeah, that gag about hurting his hand, that was a hot one. Uh, Cost me every nickel I had. Yeah, well, I'd bet ten bucks on that guy. Let me Where see, ten out of twenty-one? I ain't gonna get rich that way. Hello, fellas. I'm sorry we lost the rifle match. What do you mean, we? I want to make your losses good. Just tell me how much you dropped. I think I'll take a walk. There's a strange smell around here. Oh, wait a minute. I said I was sorry. What do you want me to do? Backflips? Yeah, wise guy. And we're just a boy who can flip, Don't too. you suck him, Harry. I had that pleasure myself once, and I'd like another crack at him now. All right, Martin. Let's go. Come on. Go, go get ahead. Him. Go on. Oh, wait. Don't fight. Don't no fight now. No, stop. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Now, don't interfere, Herbie. I got to interfere, Smitty. Somebody's going to get hurt. Stop. Will you follow us before somebody gets hurt? Oh. Oh, Ooh, I'm sorry, Herbie. There, oh. you see? He got me. He socked me right in the eye. I told you not to interfere. Look out, fellas. Here comes the sergeant. What's going on in there? Hey, boys, cut it out. The sergeant. Jiggers, jiggers, the sergeant. What is this? What's the matter in here? Nothing at all, Sarge. Nobody was fighting in here, honest. No? no? Then how'd you get that black eye? What black eye? Have I got a black eye? Listen, you. I don't know what's going on in here, but I'll bet you're in the middle of it. You said it. <laughs> cut it out, see? Or you'll find yourself on KP. Now, I want it quiet in here. I don't want to hear another peep out of you guys, or there's going to be trouble. What an army. What a sergeant. Give me liberty or give me death. Benjamin Franklin, or vice versa. All right. I'm getting sick of it, all Smitty. Right, all right, all right. I don't know why he's always I, picking on no, me. I don't, don't feel so bad, please. That Here. guy sucked me right in the eye. Well, it's your own fault. Not around it, mind you. Right in it. I know it. Here, Herbie. You can listen to my radio. Thanks, Smitty. It's all right. You're the only friend I got around here. Who's doing that? Who's playing that radio? Nobody. It's playing by itself. Well, turn it off. Turn it off? All right. The men have to get up at 5.45 in the morning. Now keep it quiet in here. See, Smitty? See what I mean? Go on and play the radio. Now, wait a minute. You heard what the guy said. He said keep it quiet. Well, Don't we... play the radio. Oh, what are you worrying about? He's only the sergeant. What's the matter? Are you scared of him? No. Go on, and play the radio all you like. Play it loud. Okay. What did I just tell you? Didn't I tell you that the men were sleeping? Didn't I tell you they've got to get up at 5.45 in the morning? Now don't play it. Okay. Is any more noise in here? I'm going to get good and sore. Now quiet. Go on and play the radio. <laughs> Smitty, the man said, don't play it in parenthesis, he said it. Go on. <laughs> Go on. Play the radio. Listen, you're an American citizen, aren't you? Yes, sir. And this is a free country, isn't it? Sure. Then what are you worrying about? Go on and play the radio. If he comes in here again, I'll tell him off. You will? Sure I will. Don't forget now. Tell him off. You just leave it to me. Shut that thing off. Shut it off. Listen, you. Go ahead, Smitty. Didn't tell I him. tell you not to play that thing? Didn't I tell you to, that the men were asleep? Smitty, no. when are you going to tell them? Shut up and you listen to me. Wait a minute, Sarge. My friend's got something to tell you. Smitty! He ain't going to tell me anything. He's asleep. Asleep? Smitty! Smitty, wake up. Don't go to sleep with me in a time like this. Smitty! Leave him alone. Okay. <laughs> now, look, you. I'm going to give you one more chance. But don't get funny, see? All right. One more crack out of you, and I'll shake you up like a terrier shakes a rat. Yeah. I'd like to see you do it. Oh, you... That wasn't it. me! That wasn't me! Oh, I didn't say a thing, brother! I heard you. You said you'd like to see me do it. I didn't say that. No, I didn't. Well, who said it then? Who Mr. said it? Smitty, wake up, will you? Wake up! Leave him alone. Listen, Sarge, he wants to tell you something. Shut up! <laughs> Smitty! Be quiet with that whimpering. <laughs> now, look, you. Close your mouth. I can't. <laughs> getting very annoyed with you. <laughs> Why don't you behave? Why don't you be quiet like your buddy here? Yeah, he's quiet, all right. But he talks in his sleep. <laughs> now remember, don't open your mouth, because if you do, I'm going to close it for you. Now, this is your last chance, buddy. All right. One more wise remark, and I'll punch you right in the nose. I'd like to see you do it. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Let me go! Let me go! Smitty! Smitty! Where are you gonna? Where are you gonna? Come on! We pause.
pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille will bring our stars, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, back to the microphone for Act Three of Buck Privates. Ladies, did you ever wash a sweater and have it come out half of its original size and all faded and scratchy into the bog? Well, it's maddening and expensive, isn't it? Why not take a tip from a woman who knows a lot about sweaters and how to care for them? She's a lady from Canada, and she sends us an interesting story. Will you read it, Sally? Mm-hmm. She says... I have a number of sweaters which I received from the old country, made of the finest wool. Some of them are three or four years old, but you'd never know it by looking at them. Their color hasn't faded one bit, and they're still as soft as when I first got them. Yet I can truthfully say that I've washed them between 40 and 50 times, always in lukewarm Lux suds. Ah, that's a fine tribute to Lux, Sally. You know, it's not surprising that new Quick Lux is by far the most popular way to care for sweaters. First of all, it's so gentle and mild, and then it's so fast. In water as cool as your hand, ideal temperature for washing sweaters, New Quick Lux dissolves three times as fast as any of ten other popular soaps tested. Finally, it's thrifty. A little Lux goes a long way. You know, I think you ought to warn women about two things that are very hard on sweaters, Mr. Ruick. Two things that may shrink them badly. Hot water is one, and the other is cake soap rubbing. You're right, Sally. With Lux, you don't need hot water, and there's no rubbing either. So you can see why woolens stay lovely looking longer with Lux care. Now, Sally, how about giving the ladies of our audience the Lux method for washing a sweater? Well, first, draw the outline of your sweater on a piece of heavy paper for a pattern. Then whip up some rich, cool Lux suds and just squeeze them through the sweater. Don't rub. Rinse in water as cool as the suds. Press out the moisture in a Turkish towel and then lay the sweater flat on your paper pattern and ease it into its original shape. Pin it with rust-proof pins and leave it to dry. After it's dry and you've taken the pins out, press the edges gently with a warm iron over a damp cloth to take the pin marks out. Thanks, Sally. Remember, new Quick Lux is safe for everything safe in water alone. It comes in the same familiar box and it doesn't cost you a cent more. Now Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Curtain rises on the third act of Buck Privates. Several weeks have gone by, and the boys from Company K are rounding into form. The sergeant says that some of them are born soldiers, but the two of them never should have been born at all. He refers, of course, to Herbie and Smitty. Now in the recreation hall, there's a boxing match about to begin. Our two Buck Privates are in the front row. Just a minute, men. In the next match, Private Bill McGuire of L Company challenges any man, particularly any man from Company K. Wait a minute, just a minute. All right, men of Company K, are we going to let him get away with that? No. no. Are we? No. Surely not. Somebody from our company should volunteer to fight him. Atta boy, Herbie. All right, boys. Okay, we've got our volunteer. Let's go. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What volunteer? Who volunteered? Why, you did, Herbie. Yeah, it was only a suggestion. Come on, come on, take off your shirt. Wait a minute, Smitty, stop. I don't want to fight that fella. I ain't even mad at him. You mean to say you're scared of that little guy over there? I mean to tell you that I am. Don't be silly. Here he comes now. Look at him. Oh, hello, soldier. Hey, who are you? I'm the fella you're going to fight. May the best man win, old man. Smitty. <laughs> so long, sir. Is that the guy? That's the guy. How much does he weigh? Oh, 118. 118? Yeah. Let me at him! Oh, I'll murder the Bruce. Sure you will. Hey, Smitty. What? I can picture myself now. The whole place is crowded. Yes. I'm coming down the aisle. Yes. I jump in a ring. Attaboy. I throw off my robe, yes. and the whole crowd lets out a terrific roar. Well, what happened? I forgot to put on my pants. Oh. <laughs> and time for trunks. Sit down in this corner. Let me at him, will you? Now, listen, kid. When you get out there in the ring, when you get him out there alone, you understand? Give him that old one, three, one, three. One, three? Yeah. What happened to two? Two you get. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> There's been a little change. A change, he says. Private McGuire's been taken sick. We're going to substitute Roaring Bill McGonagall, former contender for the heavyweight championship 
of the world. Let me out of here. Uh, Get uh, me you... out of here. Sit down, sit down. Smitty, don't hold on. Stand Let go. Up, Stop it. You can't run now. Just give me a chance and watch me. Now, listen, you're staying right here now. Quiet. All right, Herbie. Step up here. I'm referee in this bout. Oh, that's fine. McGonagall, come here. Where's the guy I'm gonna Let me out of here! I'll bust him in little pieces. This is the guy right here. Him? <laughs> uh, Spinny! <laughs> I'm getting out of here before they take me away in a white wagon. You mean an ambulance? I don't mean the good humor, man. <laughs> Boys, you know the rules. No holding in the clinches. Break clean and no hitting below the belt. You mean I can't hit him like that? Ow! Ooh, ooh. No, no, you can't hit him like that. And you cannot do this either. Oh! <laughs> oh, but I can do this. Can I? Ow! Oh, they're killing me, Smitty. Yeah, all right, but you cannot do this. Oh! <laughs> all right, now shake hands, boys. I don't have to. My hands are shaking already. Now go back to your corners and come out fighting. Now, go ahead. Go right after him, Herbie. Stop the fight. Stop the fight. Well, what's the matter? I'm winded. Get in there and fight. Herbie. Herbie. Herbie, why don't you stop some of those punches? You don't see any of them getting by, do you? Hey, Spitty. Come on. This guy is yellow. What's the matter? He won't come down on the floor and fight like a man. Get up. Come on, get up and fight. You can't lose. You've got a horseshoe in your glove. Then that guy must have the rest of the horse in his. Oh! One, two, three. Herbie. Herbie. Oh. Herbie, old fellow. Wake up, pal. Wake up. Oh. Come on, wake up. Wake up. That's the boy. Is it over? Mm, it's all over, pal. You know something? I hear birds singing. Well, sure. It's morning, pal. Oh, morning? Mm -hmm. What morning? Tuesday. What day was the fight? Friday. Friday? Mm -hmm. I had a long rest, didn't I? <laughs> Everybody out. Roll out. Come on, Harvey. On your feet. Company K, full marching order of 15 minutes. Yes, sir. Company K, full marching order in 15 minutes. Hey, what goes on? We're going on maneuvers. What's maneuvers? It's like a sham battle. A sham battle? I should have stayed in bed. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the radio audience. This is Terry Masson, speaking to you directly from a central observation point for the most extensive army maneuvers ever attempted by the United States in peacetime. From my post, I can see several miles of the battlefield. I'm looking through my glasses now towards Skyleton Cliff, one of the points of defense for the Blue Army. It's a huge hill of granite with only one possible means of approach, the west side. The other sides are sheer drops of 100 to 200 feet. It's a neat problem for the Red Army. And now I'm looking down... Come on, Harvey. Keep walking. Hey, I can't walk no further, Smitty. My feet are killing me. No wonder. You've got two left shoes on. Is that wrong? Oh, certainly. Why, you're dumb. I don't know what's wrong with you, Smitty. You certainly are dumb. Well, what and do you to mean? prove to you how dumb you really are, suppose you had ten dollars in one pants pocket and five dollars in the other pants pocket. What would you have? The captain's pants on. No. Uh, <laughs> silly answers. Ask me something with a little sense to it. Will you answer it? Yeah. All right, look. All right, say say you're forty years old. You're 40 years old and you're in love with a little girl, say, 10 years old. This one's going to be a pit. Now, wait till I finish it. Now, just now I'm going around with a 10-year-old girl. Well, wait a minute now. You got a good idea where I'm going to wind now, up. just a minute, just a minute. Look, <laughs> you're 40 years old and you're in love with this little girl, 10 years old. Now, you're four times as old as the girl. You couldn't marry her, could you? Not unless I come from the mountain. Now, listen. <laughs> you're 40, she's 10. You're four times as old as the girl. So you wait uh, five years. Now the little girl is 15. You're 45. Now you're only three times as old as that little girl. So you wait 15 years more. Now the little girl is 30. Now you're 60. Now you're only twice as old as that little girl. She's catching up. Uh, yes. Now here's the question. How long do you have to wait before you and that little girl become the same age? Now wait a minute, Smitty. That whole thing is ridiculous. Nothing ridiculous. If I keep what? waiting for that girl, she'll pass me up. What do you mean? She'll wind up older than I am. What are you talking and about? And she'll have to wait for me. Why should she wait for you? I was nice enough to wait for her. <laughs> Herbie. 
Smitty, come on. Hiya, Randy. What's cooking? Well, listen, you fellas got to help me. Bob Martin's up on Scarleton Cliff. What's he doing up there? He tried to climb up and pull a surprise attack on the Blue Army. He got halfway up and slipped. Wait a minute. Don't tell me. I can't stand it. No, he's all right, but he twisted his leg or something. He's stuck on a ledge up there. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to climb up to the ledge of the rope, but I'll need some help. Somebody's got to climb up with me. Now, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be, Herbie? Well, here we go again! <laughs> Almost done, Martin. Can you hold on a little longer? Sure. Smitty. I'm right down here. Come on, you're doing fine. Hey, Herbie, hold on to that rope up there. I got it! Watch it, Smitty. Well, we made it. Martin, are you all right? Sure, I'm fine. Come on, I'll get you back to camp. You just about saved my life, mister. Forget it, we're in the army, aren't we? Anyway, I didn't want to see you miss that date with Judy. Well, maybe we... Ought to keep it together, huh? Thanks. Come on, let's go. Hey, Schmitty! Watch out for the rope! Hey, what are you doing up there? I'm throwing the rope down. Look out! No, 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 no. Wait, wait. Don't throw that rope. Look out below! Look, listen, you dope. How do you expect to get down without the rope? I never give it a thought! Schmitty! Look out! Look Her- out! Herbie! Herbie, how did you get up in that tree? How did I get up in the tree? I sat on it when it was an acorn! <laughs> Look, boys. Here's Randy Parker. Hello, Randy. Hello. Come on, I'll buy you soda. Soda nothing. I'll buy you a man's drink. A double malt. <laughs> I thought you guys were broke. Broke? Hey, does this look like we're broke? Look at all that dough. Oh, where'd you get it? Well, we just about busted the Blue Army at 10 to 1. Hey, Randy, when are you getting out of the Army? Oh, I sort of changed my mind about that. I'll get out when my time's up. That's the stuff. Hello, Randy. Oh, hello, Judy. I've been hearing things about you from Bob. May I have this dance, soldier? May you have this... What are we waiting for? <laughs> Come on. Very nice guy, that Randy. Yeah, you know, that's really something, overcoming the handicap of being a millionaire. Gee, Smitty, I wish I was handicapped like that. Well, well, boys, how are you? Say, did I clean out the Blue Army? Look at the dough I have, fellas. Hey, that's not bad, Sarge. Go on, Herbie. Show them what we won. Yeah. Hey, Sergeant, look what we won. Well, that's quite a roll, too. Say, uh, Herbie, tell me, did you ever shoot dice? Dice? Yeah, dice. But, you know, it's a little game. No kidding. Yeah, would you like to step outside with me for a minute? Thank you, Sarge. I would be very happy to accept your most cordial invitation. Herbie, how can you do it? <laughs> I'm a bad boy! <laughs> Just a moment, our stars will return for their curtain call. Do you remember the game that you used to play when you were little, to tease somebody? You held something behind your back, a piece of candy or something like that, and then you said, which hand will you have? Well, not so long ago, there were hundreds of women who might have asked you, much more seriously, which hand will you have? And then shown you two very different looking hands. One, smooth and white and lovely. The other, rough, red and harsh. Those women were making the famous Lux test of dishwashing soaps, the test that proved no woman need have red, rough dishpan hands. Here's how the test was made. Each woman went to a famous laboratory and for 20 minutes, three times a day, put one hand in a dishpan full of Lux suds, the other in suds from one of five other well-known dishwashing soaps. The conditions were similar to home dishwashing. After weeks of this, The Lux hands were still soft, smooth, and lovely, but the other hands looked red, rough, and chapped. You see, there's a great difference between new Quick Lux flakes and many ordinary soaps. Lux contains no harmful alkali, nothing to dry or irritate or coarsen the skin. Why not change to new Quick Lux for your dishes tomorrow? It's inexpensive because that generous big box does dishes for many, many meals. Jot it down on your shopping list tomorrow. Lux for dishes. New Quick Lux comes in the same familiar package, costs you no more. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. Cabernet, pension. Privates Abbott and Costello, step forward for a curtain call. Gentlemen, you gave a distinguished performance. Distinguished? 
No, wait, no, 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 no. Yeah, but what kind of talk is that? No, 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 wait. Is that French or something? No, 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 no. Mr. DeMille means you were great. You were terrific, colossal, stupendous. Only fair, huh? I no. Oh no, Lou. So tonight you take your place in the Lux Radio Theater beside such artists as Irene Dunn, William Powell, Myrna Loy, Ronald Coleman, and Hedy Lamar. I take my place beside them? That's what he said. Right next to Ronald Coleman. You can be next to Ronald Coleman. I want to be next to Hedy Lamar. <laughs> Lamar! All right, all right. All right. Oh, Lou, Lou, please. Remember, you must be dignified now that you're a great actor. I beg your pardon. I am sorry. Woo! Get the talk on me. Woo! You, you should be sorry. I'm a bad boy. I'll never win the Academy Award. Of course not. Who I'm is? answering for you, Abbott. Oh. Of course not. <laughs> uh, the the Academy you, Award. Something. The Academy Award usually goes to a great dramatic performance, Lou. You're a buffoon. Now, listen here, kid. No more cracks nah, like yeah, that. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, after all, Mr. DeMille, I don't go to uh, that, that kind of stuff. Now, I mean, wait a minute. You don't I, I may no... be a little chubby, but no. I'm no buffalo. Now, I mean... Wait a <laughs> But the kid made a remark and no. told me I'm a buffalo. No, wait, he did nothing of the kind. He said a buffoon. He means you're funny. Comical. Uh, I, I, oh. I'm afraid he's impossible. I, I wash my hands of him. I knew he'd get Lux in here somewhere. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you win, Lou. By the way, what are you fellas doing next Monday night? Why, not a thing, Mr. DeMille. But uh, don't you think it's a little too soon to... No, uh... no, wait, bud. We have a fine play scheduled for next week. It's Blood and Sand. One of the screen's great love stories. You remember the 20th Century Fox picture with Tyrone Power and all the exciting scenes he played in the arena after he became the greatest bullfighter in Spain? You're sure you fellas aren't busy? No, but uh, what I want to know is which one of us plays the part of the bullfighter. <laughs> now, now, wait a minute. You thought I wanted you to act next week. No, gentlemen. I was just going to urge you not to miss the play because our stars will be Tyrone Power and Annabella. Oh. oh, but Mr. DeMille, if anything should happen to Tyrone Power, <clears throat> you know where to reach me, don't you, brother? <laughs> oh, brother. Good night, Good night folks. folks. <laughs> Good night. You tell Tyrone Power you're available. <laughs> Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Tyrone Power and Annabella in Blood and Sand. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, have you heard about Gracie Allen's new radio program? Well, then listen to this open letter from Gracie herself. Dear everybody, George and I just love open letters. They're so nice and airy. We love all kinds of open things, like the big open spaces all over the West, especially Paul Whiteman's West, the West he wears when he conducts the orchestra on a new show. Besides Paul, we've got Bill Goodwin, Senior Lee, and Jimmy Cash. So open up your loudspeaker, won't you, and let us in with our new show? Signed, Gracie. Yes, be sure to listen to the new program starring George Burns and Gracie Allen tomorrow night, Tuesday. See your newspaper for time and station. Bud Abbott and Lou Costello appeared tonight through the courtesy of Chasen Sandburn. They will soon be seen in the new Universal picture, Keep Em Flying. Our music was directed by Lois Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. <laughs> this is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>